Hi, Bernard. Hi, Carsten. So in this video, we are going to deploy an empty AVD host pool in Azure. Yeah, now we switch to Azure, right? We need some resources in Azure and uh, we had a hefty discussion how to name them. <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, let's go to it's the a uh, joke, but it's also a problem. You have to specify right names for your resource groups uh, uh, and, and every resource in Azure. Otherwise, it will be a mess. <laughs> yes, yeah, so naming conventions could be a could you know be a lot uh, could raise a lot of discussions so um yes for the people new to avd uh right uh there are th three objects that you should be aware of uh so there is a management plane for uh, managing azure virtual desktop and it's the same one um also for if you would place azure virtual desktop on hci so a lot of things would be managed here not all of them but um, most of them so this, uh, the same concepts apply to AVD on HCI, and the management plane would be the same. Um, first, we have host pools, uh, and we, we are going to create a host pool. A host pool is a definition of desktops, what operating system they have, you know, if they are used for, uh, for pooled users or if they are used for personal desktops. That means Bernard Frank always gets the same desktop. Um, um, and you know, sort of configure also the load balancing mechanism, the distribution, and and some other settings. Like for example, can I bring my USB uh, to that desktop or not? Uh, the other thing is the uh, the second thing is the application groups. Uh, this is where you uh, say, hey, these users have access to this desktop, right? So you have the uh, user to desktop. Um, management there. And then finally, you have the workspace, which is sort of displaying what the individual user can see, which desktops he can see, which resources he can access, right? So um, the first thing, we will create the desktop, um, or no, not the desktop, the host pool, um, in which we will put the desktops later into. Um, so this is, would be this video, okay? So let's create a host pool. And uh, we'll put it into the right subscription. Let's choose the right one. And we also create a new resource group, which we call AVD, and maybe also the uh, location, which is in our case should be West Europe. So let's change that to West Europe. Um, why am I naming this? Um, because all of the resources within that resource group should be, for consistency reason, be also tagged in or you know in West Europe. Um, that does mean the Azure objects, right? I mean the desktops will be in your database or not in your data center, uh, wherever that is. But the you know the the mappings um, to it will be in West Europe. Um, mm -hmm. and they need to be sort of consistent so that each of the resources see each other, right? So I think, what was the name for the host pool? I think we agreed AVD on AVD dash yeah. HCI, and then, mm -hmm. and then we specified uh, host Number. pool one. Yes, so we might have multiple ones. Um, it is AVD workload. It is sitting on HCI, right? Um, and then it is not a validation environment. I mean, some of the preview features would go into this or you would have access to preview features at some point if you do uh, validation environments. Um, now let's do it like this. Um, we have a preferred app group, so we could do remote apps, but at that section, we just wanna concentrate on the desktop itself, meaning access to the full desktop. And uh, then there is the another option, which is, you know, either do you want to use a personal desktop? Um, so sort of a one-to-one -one mapping um, that could be for high, you know, for high privileged users like um, developers or construction designers that always, you know, that need to install stuff. Uh, they, might, and they may wanna have a designed uh, or a designated uh, desktop. You have your own machine, right? Uh, um, right, right. Where you always are connected to if it's available. Right. And with pooled, what is pooled then, Bernard? Pooled is, you know, you are, think of it like the scenario for remote 
desktop workers for people that are you know traveling around um connecting up to um to uh, a desktop using an internet cafe for example or something like that so you know they might be using it sporadically um and um, hence a pooled resource is much better suited for them as it is making more uh, it is economically more efficient right so so uh, yeah. i i was in the past uh, i also did some uh, citrix deployments but it's uh, long ago and we had multiple citrix servers or terminal servers where every server had the same application installed so it doesn't matter where right. a computer connect a uh, user connects he has always his applications like any other uh, other uh, employer also so this is a kind of pool you have multiple of them and right. They are assigned on a on a load balancing basis, right? And that's right. So, the next. Oh. Yeah, right. So you have, for example, hundred users connected to ten desktops, right? Ten desktops are running, and you know there's sort of some load balancing mechanism that is distributing the uh, the access to the users. But okay. all of the desktops are looking the same, right? So yes, um, this is the scenario we want to use, and there is you know the load balancing mechanisms that are there is breadth first. That means you know, you fill up the first host. Um, no, breadth, I always uh, mix them up. So breadth first is, you know, you sort of try to equal, equally distribute the load. So first user, first node, second user, second node, third user, third node, and so on. Um, however, you know, from an economical perspective, sometimes you want to maybe do this depth first, which is filling up the first host, right so you say hey five users is the max then you go to the next one um and this gives you you know um sort of maybe the chance to shut down some of the hosts if they are not used yeah and, right uh, in azure that makes sense yeah because you pay hmm. by uh, the running machine right correct, so correct if correct. you need resources right. for 20 users you only need four machines maybe yeah and the yeah. others don't have to run and don't yeah. not built to you on premises right. it's maybe it is maybe different it is maybe different but however you know there's some discussion going on via the licensing and the billing uh regulations for avd on hci so it might also be interesting for this one mm -hmm. but um let's pretend that we want to have the best performance for every users right so that we want to equally <laughs> use all of the resources we have so uh i go for breath first Right. I like that you said, let's pretend <laughs> that we want the, the best performance for the user. That's a good one. Yes, yes. We are admins. We are not the, you know, we are not the financial guys. We are the, uh, the good guys for the Okay, for the we users, are the good right? guys. Next. So next networking, right? Um, so uh, in Azure, you could have the possibility, you know, in order to disable public access and only use, you know, your site to site VPN tunnel or express route you know, only using internal IP addresses for access. But, you know, in our case, we have external users, you know, wanting to connect to the Azure backplane, logging on, right? And then, you know, maybe, uh, and then hand it over to on-premises network. So in order for our scenario to work from an internet cafe, we would need to enable the public access from all networks. Mm -hmm. Be you know you should know you should be aware of it that the desktops that we create are not having public ip addresses you know you don't need to you know sort of be afraid that they that they will receive brute force attacks from somewhere in the internet because the only way that they are accessible is through avd right and the first entry point to avd is azure and the microsoft controlled part so microsoft takes care about you know the brute force kind of stuff right um but um we the desktops that we create have only internal ip addresses from our internal on-premises network right so um and we'll tell you a little bit why that works uh later virtual machines um no we are not creating these ones here all uh, right okay uh don't have the permissions to some of your objects anyways um we are not creating Azure Virtual Machines here, and you could see there is no option for creating HCI-based uh, virtual machines. Mm -hmm. So we need to do it in a different way, um, and that's a later video. Hence, Workspace, now let's do it also later. Um, therefore, we skip that scap 
uh, step. Um, we are also doing diagnostics later. And uh, maybe there's this, you know, we can do some tags for if you ever want to blame someone for, you know, not <laughs> doing things right, you could add some tags. Okay, creating a host pool should be relatively quick um, because it's only, you know, some uh, an object, or an empty object, nothing big needs to be deployed in Azure, right? So it's only sort of specifying the access. So, hey, um, Rafal IT solutions can now access some AVD backplane, um, right? Um, and that's relatively fast. Okay, so we have done this step and this, um, let's go to the host pool. And as you could see, we have no total machines. Well, okay, obvious, um, this is a later video, but um, we have our host pool created. And I think that's our mission for this video. That's true. So in the next video, we will create some more Azure resources, right? Mm -hmm. See you there.